Uh, okay, so here's a shader I've been working on. This is a kind of a um, an evolution of a hide reveal shader. So I have a hide and reveal shader here, which will hide and reveal uh, based on the position to the player, which is just this little capsule here. So uh, in this shader, I've got a few standard things, but then what I have is this visibility distance, which is calculated based on the distance to the player. And then I have the uh, this rim distance, or this outline distance, and then I also have um, a, a switch here, which can flip this from uh, revealing everything near the player to hiding everything, uh, and then you can reveal certain hidden objects. Um, so that's kind of a useful shader, um, but I wanted to expand on this to make this, and what this uh, shader does is it's it uses that same idea of hide and reveal. Um, let's maximize this. Um, but it uses that same idea of hide and reveal, um, only this time it allows you to scratch away some of the texture so that you can reveal certain things below. So you can see I have some hidden objects in here and we can get sort of a lotto ticket effect or a, in this case sort of knocking the ice blocks away. So, uh, so that's what I was working on here. And um, this texture is pretty fun. If I uh, check this out in the editor, what's going on here is uh, I have a couple of things. I have the same thing. Instead of a player, I have a, an area of an effect that I can control. And I have the same type of uh, area of effect distances and so on that I can do. Uh, you can see this is actually just a plane uh, with the shader on it. Um, so I can control the area within which you can draw. But the, the cool thing here is that um, if I uh, uh, flip the, the box from hide and reveal, you can see that um, now what I'll get is instead of a scratch away effect, um, I'm going to get a paint on effect. Um, and then where this can be really useful is if I maximize this and I get my paint on effect, you can see that I actually have uh, the uh, Unity remote up on here on my iPhone. And so I can actually draw with my iPhone. It's kind of hard to do while looking at the screen. So, But if I draw here, you can see that I can uh, use this to either draw or in the other mode to to rub with my finger and scratch away um, so that was what i was trying to do was create sort of a, a, scr a scratch and sniff or a draw or a scratch and sniff um, uh, filter so what's fun here is if you see what's happening here um, on the edit window i have uh, two cameras one for the view and then i have an orthogonal camera up above here which is looking straight down. And you can see that this texture um, has its own view. It's only rendering this strange little orb. Uh, and this guy is kind of like a little UFO. It has a, a red ball and then a squashed uh, green ball. And the reason I'm doing that, you will see presently, um, if I look at my camera view here, which is what this orthogonal camera is seeing, I'm just going to play this so I can draw on my iPhone. So if I draw on here, um, what you'll see is that that ball is following my finger. So what the camera is seeing is it's seeing that ball move around and nothing else. There's, uh, there's, there's, no, uh, there's no background or anything being rendered there. And then what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm putting that into a render texture. So if you see the this here, every time we reset, this render texture is going to reset to black. But when we play, uh, oh, sorry, let me freeze that. Okay, so if you see this render texture over here, and you see me drag the ball into that camera's view, you can see that what the camera's seeing is being recorded onto that render texture. So it's seeing red, the red ball traveling around, and then the green outline. So the reason that I did that is because I'm passing the red channel and the green channels uh, into the shader and doing different things with both. So the red channel is affecting the alpha uh, and the green channel is actually warping the pixels, pushing them a little bit. 
Um, so if you see this, it's a little bit hard to see, um, probably on here, but um, but there's a subtle effect where uh, around your finger, the pixels are also being warped. So it looks like the normal map is being uh, adjusted, but actually it's just uh, RGB values are being pushed um, uh, based on the UV uh, the VUV value. So I'm, I'm modifying the UV value slightly in the fragment. So um, that's how I'm getting this effect. Um, and that's how I have kind of this, uh, this neat little scratch and uh, scratch away effect. Now, of course, this, uh, unfreeze that. this uh, shader um, also has other standard things. I'm, I'm doing sort of ice blocks right now, but I don't have to do ice blocks. Um, let's pull this out over here. So I can use um, any texture I want. You know, I could use this colored ground. I could use uh, mushrooms <laughs> or anything that makes sense. Um, and then I can uh, also change the normal map, you know, to be something that, that makes sense. Um, these aren't really set up as normal maps, but um, obviously I can adjust the normal maps as well. And uh, I can get um, uh, any of any kind of effect. So it couldn't, it could be more than just ice, of course. Um, and then the other thing is that I am using rim light uh, in my shader just to have this grazing light here um, and kind of have the sort of this ice glow effect. So I do have a, um, a color value to affect that. But of course, you could create um, all sorts of different effects and, uh, and, uh, and use this same thing to hide and reveal um, you know, anything, panels and walls and so on. And my, and my idea of in creating it as a shader is so that I could create, you know, the, the world underneath there or the objects underneath that I want to hide and just leave them there in a static way um, and then have this shader be placed over top uh, whenever it's necessary. And uh, so anyway, that's one solution I came up with for creating sort of a, a scratch away effect. Um, the nice thing about it is because the render camera is going to render anything that's on a specific layer, this render texture layer, um, it's not limited to a certain object. There's no scripts on these objects. Um, they're simply um, on a layer, so I can uh, create more objects that are on that same layer, and um, it will all render to the render texture. So I could use particles, uh, I could use textures, anything that's going to pass color data. In this case, I'm just using the red and green channels. So I have a, another you know, two channels I could use, blue and alpha, to create additional effects if I wanted to. Um, uh, around this object. So um, yeah, I'm working on that and uh, yeah, that's, that's what it is.